Hey guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Holt Industries fluid extractor and dispenser that you can get from Harbor Freight. Now, Harbor Freight has really been trying to improve their image. They've revised some of their older products or they're coming out with new higher end products. So Harbor Freight before had a fluid extractor and dispenser and Holt Industries came out with this revised one. So it's light years better than the one that they had. And I'm going to review this one today and also use it to change the oil on my IS300. And I'm going to challenge myself to see if I can do an oil change on this car in three minutes or less by using this extractor. I'm going to go over my thoughts and opinions on this extractor and dispenser before I actually use it on the oil change. So let's get into that. So when you open up the box, this is how it's going to come. It's going to come fully assembled and it does have three different hoses here and I'll, I'll talk about these hoses later. But it does come fully assembled, ready to use, and it does feel really high quality. The only two issues that I had when I got mine out of the box, this cap right here was incredibly tight. I'm not sure if the threads are wrong or, you know, if there was just a defect in the manufacturing process or what, but I had to use channel locks to get this cap off right here. And it doesn't even go on all the way. Uh, there's only like two threads in the cap. And, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right by how little it goes on and it was incredibly tight but other than that it does feel really really nice the pump right here does the dispensing and extracting action and it does feel high quality as well and it has this switch right here you pull up to extract fluid and fill the reservoir and you push down to dispense it and empty the reservoir it's very simple and what I like about it is everything kind of looks serviceable except for this tank here if any of these fittings or lines break for whatever reason, it all looks like it can be replaced pretty easily. Even the switch right here, so you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a new one. If the tank cracks, obviously you'll probably have to get a new one. But all of this looks pretty serviceable to me, which I really like, and it does feel really nice. There's a really nice stainless steel spring right here, and the whole thing just feels nice, but I do have a problem. All right, so my problem with this is the way they designed the bottom of the reservoir. I'll show you this after the demonstration. Now, when you extract a fluid, it fills up the reservoir, and then when you go to dispense, you have a percentage loss. I don't know what that exact volume is, but I have here a gallon of water, and I will demonstrate that. We will suck a gallon of water out, and when I put it back in, we won't have a full gallon of water. So this is the main extraction line. You just push it right into the push lock fitting, super easy. And we will suck every drop out of this gallon of water here. All right, so we have the hose in the gallon of water. We will pull up on the switch to evacuate, and then you just pump. So, basically what happens when you're pumping this, it doesn't pull at a one-to-one -one ratio. It builds a bunch of vacuum in here, and then it continues to suck. So now, we'll put this on dispense, fill it back up, and we will see how much we lost. <laughs> well, there is a little bit of loss there. So, it's not a complete gallon. I did spill a little bit on the floor, but I'll show you what I'm talking about here. There is still fluid in here. A fair amount of fluid. Let's find out why. All right, so now I'm basically just gonna try to take this whole thing apart. Oh, that piece fell off. Whatever that is. Uh, I 
Oh, it goes on right here. I think that is to stop it for when it's full. There's the problem. See how it looks like a pie or a piece of pizza on the bottom down there? They did that for strength, but each one is a little pocket that's not connected to the other. And each one holds a fair amount of fluid. This tube is what extracts the fluid from down there, and it can only go in one pocket. If it's even gonna go in a pocket, it might hit, you know, one of the top ridges. So you have five other pockets in there full of fluid that it can't extract. I get that they added that for strength, but they should have made the bottom flat, or at least made them all connected. So now you have pockets that hold on to fluid that you'll never get out without dumping this thing out. And to me, that is incredibly annoying, and I think that's just a small engineering mistake, kind of careless and lazy, and I really feel like they could, should, and need to improve that design. That, to me, that's just kind of unacceptable. They should either all be connected or it should be completely flat down there. And this tube right here uh, is intriguing me. I have no idea what it is. It's hose clamped right here. And if you look at the top side, it has a hole right there. But at the bottom, it's completely crimped shut. You cannot blow air in this. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe if you guys know in the comments down below, let me know. Um, but yeah, this is to stop it, I guess, from pulling in once it fills up. This is like a float. And you know, the rest of it is pretty high quality. They did put, I guess, a little bit of grease on the ring right here to seal it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, you can fully disassemble this, and this is how you're going to have to clean it, I guess, if you are going to use this for multiple fluids. <sighs> so let's get this thing back together. All right, got it all back together. Now I'll talk about these three hoses. It does, come, it does come with three. The main extraction or dispensing tube. You push right into the push lock fitting. And then, these are adapters to go from the larger hose to these two smaller ones. This real small one, I don't know the diameter off the top of my head. This is for extracting oil. And I believe this one is for extracting transmission fluid. These can go right down the dipstick and suck it right out of the pan. So once you have it in the adapter, just shove this down the dipstick and you can start extracting. I really do think this thing is gonna make my life a whole lot easier, but I think the biggest problem with this is that it's either gonna eat up a lot of time or you're gonna need multiple of these. So if you use this for any kind of fluid, basically, if you don't clean it out every time or stick to just that fluid, you're gonna have contamination every time. So for example, this would be really good for extracting and dispensing differential fluid. The problem is you can extract all the fluid, you get it in, but then it's full of dirty fluid. The hose is full, the reservoir is full, the pockets down there are full of dirty fluid, so you have to clean it if you're worried about it. Extract it all out but it's probably not that big of a deal. If you just drain it all out, the residual fluid in there that's dirty probably isn't that big of a deal. Um, but then you could put the new fluid in and pump it out. But then you're gonna have that percentage loss that I was showing you, and that's pretty significant with like a differential or if you're doing brake fluid. That's a fair amount of fluid that came out onto the floor, so you really need to be careful with your measuring if you dispense with this. Then once you're finished with the differential fluid, if you wanted to use this for oil or transmission fluid, then you gotta clean it and I'm sure it's not gonna be the easiest thing to clean. And the instructions for this irritate me. They tell you, you know, to avoid contamination, clean it every use or after every use, and to use a solvent that is compatible with the plastic. That's literally what it says. Use a solvent that is compatible with the plastic and will not damage it. They don't tell you what solvent that is. You know, they don't tell you if it's mineral spirits or Dawn or Purple Power, lacquer thinner or whatever. They don't tell you. Now, I'm sure there's some guy out there, oh, of course you can't use this and this on plastic, but not everyone knows that. So someone might just put lacquer thinner or acetone in here and completely ruin it. So I wish they would tell you what to use, at least be general or say, don't use this, this, and this. So I'm thinking to clean this thing, either Purple Power or Dawn Dish Soap, um, but I think to make my life easier and so I don't buy five or six of these, 
I think I'm just gonna use this for extraction only. If you only use this for extraction, you don't need multiples, you only need one because it's gonna have dirty fluid in it all the time and it doesn't matter. So that's why I'm gonna do my oil change today. And just for shiggles, after I extract the fluid, I'm gonna see how difficult it is to clean this thing. So let's get to changing the oil in this car. So this car does burn a little bit of oil, so it's not perfectly full, but pretty close. Probably have four and a half quarts in there, maybe. It kind of feels like I'm gonna be cheating for this if I can do it in three minutes or less because I do have my oil filter relocated to right here which will make this unbelievably fast. I don't need to get under the car for anything, but a lot of newer cars have it right here, so I'd say it's pretty fair. If you have a newer WRX, if you use this extractor, your oil filter's up top, you don't need to get under the car. So let's suck that oil out, fill it with oil, get this filter off, and see how fast I can do it. Shove the tube all the way down until it hits the oil pan. Pull it up to extract. It's definitely slower than water because it's thicker. I basically just have to wait for it to extract now. We're just above one liter. So I think this tube might be a little too thin for the oil that I'm running. I did put the STP oil stabilizer in, so it is on the thicker side. Well, we're past the three minute mark, so we'll just uh, stop that. So I think you're basically limited to how much vacuum you can pull. Once you get to, you know, whatever that limit is, it basically just doesn't pull anymore. So we've pulled all the vacuum that we can, and now it's just slowly extracting the oil out. I'm probably running too thick of oil for that hose. Um, I probably should have used the larger one if it fits. But we're at four and a half liters now, coming up on five liters. It's got to be empty soon. I mean, there's only four and a half quarts in there. I'm not sure what the conversion is, but we've got to be getting close, I would think. Um... But yeah, basically you just pull all the suction and sit back and relax. Oh, we got air bubbles. We got air bubbles. So that is all the oil. Now I'm sure some of you might be concerned of the amount of oil that's sitting on the bottom of the pan. I don't think that's going to be an issue. I mean, there's oil that sits in the top of the cylinder head and all kinds of places in the engine that you're not going to get. I'm not really concerned with that little film that's going to be on the, the bottom of the pan. Um, I'm just going to extract all that I can and then put new oil in it. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Unless you had engine damage or bearing damage where there's a lot of metal, I don't think this is going to be an issue at all. And now it's all bubbly. Yeah, it's all the way bottomed out, sitting on the pan, so we'll just let it pull all the vacuum out, get as much oil out as it can, and then we'll add new fluid. Well, apparently I skipped fourth grade or fifth grade math class because I was looking at this like, man, there's no way I extracted five liters of fluid out of that car. I only put five in and I know it burns. What is going on? But uh, apparently a quart and a liter are like the same thing. So I was about to say, I think they got their measurements wrong, but the conversion is almost one to one. So pretty accurate. Um, so I did get five liters or five quarts out. Um, now, I guess since I didn't meet my goal of doing it in three minutes, I'll do my oil change and then uh, I will see how easy it is to extract the oil out of this to put it into a container and then see how easy it is to clean. So I will catch up with you after I'm finished this oil change. All right, so now you could either pour the fluid out of this or dispense it. We'll just dispense it because it's probably gonna be cleaner. Um, so we'll see how easy it dispenses. It's definitely not having a problem now. I think that hose was just too small for this oil. Same thing as the vacuum. I guess you can only put so much pressure in there and it'll just continue to push out until it evens out. So not even pumping right now and it's dispensing. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! That's an issue. <laughs> oh no. So, uh, be careful of that. Be careful of the bubbles. Probably should have did this from the get-go. But now, we'll pour the rest out and see how much is still in here. Eh, probably should have did that from the beginning. But, uh, hey, learn from my mistakes. Ugh, now let me clean up this frickin' oil spill. Alright, so I'm just going to suck up a little bit of Dawn dish soap into there. Um, it should coat the whole inside with Dawn. And then I'll suck up water and just try to slosh it around and see if I can clean it with just Dawn and water. Alright, so I sucked up a bunch of water, shook it all around. As you can see by the suds, I have this thing completely filled up with foam. I guess now you just have to find the way that you feel is best to dispose of this. Just keep flushing it until it's clean if that's what you want to do. Um, so, yeah, now I just got to get all the foam out. All right, guys, so the whole industry is fluid extractor and dispenser. Now, the last clip, I believe it was me using this on my IS-300 and I tried cleaning it. If you're going to use this, I would not recommend cleaning it. I mean, unless you have a whole lot of time to kill. It's really time consuming to clean this effectively and also disposing of the fluid safely and in, and in an environmentally friendly way. It takes a lot of time and effort. Um, so if you're gonna use this, I would recommend only using it for extraction or only using it for a fluid that you won't mind contamination. So you could effectively use this for just doing oil changes. You know, if you extract all the oil, dump it out, the little bit of dirty oil that's gonna be left in there in the lines when you pump the new oil in probably isn't gonna be the biggest deal in the world but you definitely don't want to cross contaminate fluids. You don't want to mix this with brake fluid and coolant and oil and such. So if you do that, you are going to have to clean it, but I don't recommend it because it is time consuming. It's messy. It's not easy. Um, so for me, I'm just going to use this for extraction. I'm just going to use it to pull old fluids out. Now you could go out and buy multiples of these if you wanted, but that gets really expensive. I do think it's a real high quality product aside from the pizza pie on the bottom. I think that needs to be improved. But everything else is pretty flawless in my opinion. Um, when I did the oil change in my IS-300, I should have used the larger line because I checked later and the larger line did fit down my dipstick tube so that would have made that a lot easier and quicker. But you know, hindsight is always 2020. So I do highly recommend this thing. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it is gonna make your life a whole lot easier if you're doing a lot of automotive work, a lot of fluid extraction and dispensing like what this thing does. And like if you have a newer WRX or a newer car with the oil filter on top and you get this, you'll never have to get on the ground again to do an oil change. And you know, for some people, that's a big deal. You know, you know, laying on your back on the concrete over time really takes a toll on your body. So I definitely think this is a worthy investment if you have the money for it. And uh, I'm definitely glad I have it. So I'll have a link in the description to this product down below if you wanna check it out. Or you can just go to Harbor Freight and check it out for yourself. Um, and hope you guys like this video. Hope maybe you learned something. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.